Hey, everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundweb Studios is the answer. Soundweb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at soundwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia's got great reviews and Eve 11 enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today and coming soon to Hamilton Radio. Also, you can also check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at themikewidenershow.com. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, makes great gifts 24-7. Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to amazon.com slash Zia. For great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also cool merchandise like t-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, themikewagnershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Wagner Show. And make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific lady who is a founder of Knock Knock Give a Sock or KKGS. It's a nonprofit organization and raises awareness about where the homeless are and who are the homeless and provides fresh socks, a much needed resource in many homeless shelters. So talk about that. And if you guys are wondering, yes, I do have socks, by the way. So, so if you're wondering if I have socks, I've got plenty. And um, this lady and the others are going to need more than that. Don't send socks to me, please. Um, this uh, organization uses a two-step approach to achieve a goal and encourages um, company and community to join and get involved and get to know each other like the old days. And of course, um, she's the author of two books, Knock Knock, Give a Sock and Knock Knock, Where's My Sock? Uh, tackles the issue of homelessness from two vantage points. We'll talk about that. Also, she'll be announcing a special uh, Mother's Day event, which will be happening not just in the area and encourages everyone all across the board. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Manhattan, the founder of Knock Knock Give a Sock, and um, she's all well covered in two feet. Ladies and gentlemen, the multi-talented founder of Knock Knock Give a Sock, Adina Lickman. Adina, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I've heard so many great things about you, so happy to finally be on the show. Well, it's great to have you on board as well, too. And do you have any socks on, by the way? I can't let you have mine. <laughs> I'm kidding. I do. I got them. Oh, wow. Oh, that's my favorite color, too. I showed you that earlier. I have a left one and a right one. I've got some white ones, brown ones, uh, green ones. But that's that's what's been happening because that has to match my outfit. So. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds great. But but of course, you know, all kidding aside, there's people out there who don't have socks and you're the founder of Knock Knock Give a Sock, your nonprofit organization, raise awareness about uh, who the homeless are and um, provides uh, fresh socks, a much needed resource in many homeless shelters. That's, um, you know, the most common. And um, of course, your organization uses a two-step approach to achieve the goal and encourages um, company and community to uh, join and get involved and get to know each other to combat the homeless and all the other issues. And you have two books out, which is called Knock Knock Give a Sock and Knock Knock Where's My Sock and takes on the issues of homeless from two different perspectives. And um, you also have a special announcement, but before getting all that, uh, Adina, um, Adina, <laughs> tell us how you got started. Ah, I put a sock in my mouth too many times. <laughs> no worries. Um, so I actually started Knock Knock Give a Sock a whole bunch of years ago when I was a sophomore in college at NYU. I was giving out sandwiches to some of my neighbors on the street experiencing homelessness when one guy said to me, ma'am, it's so nice you're giving out sandwiches, but one thing we could really use are socks. And I realized my feet were too small and my socks weren't going to fit him. So I decided to knock on every door on my floor. And in about 15 minutes, I got over 40 pairs of socks. Wow. 
Fast forward to my senior year of college, we ended up spreading to over 20 college campuses and collecting over 50,000 pairs of socks. Wow. And Mike, that's when I joke that I actually became a sock celebrity. I would, <laughs> I would be asked to come speak at schools and synagogues and churches about knock, knock, give a sock. And I would always ask the audience two questions. So I'll ask them to you. Mike, have you ever given money, food, or clothing to someone in need or to donation bin? I've done that, yes. And the next question I ask is, can you tell me the name of one person experiencing homelessness? Well, I do have to say is that uh, where I live is that um, they had them around uh, apart apartments and uh, abandoned homes, mobile home trailers and everything. And uh, every time um, I go shopping with my family, you know, we um, bring some leftover food from uh, a nearby Wendy's or grab um, Little Caesars on the way home or anything like that. We carry leftovers. And there are times they come up and say, hey, got any money? We're hungry. I says, we have no money. We can just give you some food. Give them the leftover Wendy's, McDonald's or whatever, or, you know, worst comes to worst, we'll just take them to a little Caesars and uh, get them a thing of pizza, you know, at the 599 pizza, pizza, and you know, that thing. And uh, what was really nice about little Caesars, I saw this online that um, some of the little Caesars employees got really tired of homeless people just digging through garbage, just looking for food, even find small bits of uh, pizza, like in the crust. And then they said, why don't you just come out in and just get we'll give you a slice of pizza and a water. So I think that's, you know, really helped as well too. And another story I had is where my wife and I, before we had kids, we lived in downtown, we we're in Chicago at the time. And um, we, uh, we got done eating a, a steak dinner and then we carried it home with us. And then homeless guy comes up and says, uh, Hey, you got any money? I'm hungry. I said, well, we got some food and here you go. So we simply just rear ourselves with carrying leftovers at home and help somebody out. So that's a whole thing. If you're carrying leftovers and you see a homeless person, you know, you know, begging for money, don't give them money, give them some food, give them something to eat and just let them enjoy themselves. That's the thing. And, and then you also brought up a thing about socks. I'll just have to go to my uh, local uh, dollar store and get some socks as well. Maybe just carry a couple. And of course, it doesn't mean socks, a cat or even the baseball white socks or red socks. So <laughs> That's great. So, so as you mentioned, there are all these ways of giving. So a lot of times I'll walk into different corporate companies or synagogues or just basically different audiences and ask them those two questions, right? Have you ever given money, food, or clothing? And everyone raises their hand and says yes and tells stories. And then sometimes I ask, can you tell me the name of one person living in a shelter? And very often, or someone experiencing homelessness, and very often they don't know the names, right? Because there's just been this moment of transaction. Mm -hmm. but not necessarily a moment of a deep interaction. So my senior year of college, I decided to bring 50 of my college classmates and 50 people who were living in local homeless shelters to have dinner side by side. Nice. Two rules. One, you had to sit next to someone new. Two, no one was allowed to serve anyone else, like soup kitchen style. Everyone had to sit family style, like meals. And by the end of the dinner, we had college students saying, Adino, we can't tell who's homeless and who's not. They were meeting moms who had three kids who couldn't afford childcare, dads who got out of prison, couldn't get jobs afterwards, people working minimum wage jobs, but that doesn't get you out of the shelter system. And most people don't even realize that in New York City alone, street homelessness, like who we see on the street, who we imagine with like the cardboard sign and the long hair and the, right? Street homelessness is actually only 5% of homelessness in New York City. 95% actually live in shelters. So wow. there are all these stigmas and stereotypes around what homelessness is. But what most people don't know is it's children. There are, out of the 60,000 people who are homeless in New York City, 25,000 are children. 70% are families, right? 40% have gotten a paycheck within the last month. So a lot of these stigmas and stereotypes around homelessness exist. Um, but are not necessarily the whole picture. So I did this dinner on college campus, this meet your neighbor dinner. It was amazing. And I decided that I wanted to do this and I wanted to bring it to the corporate space. So mm. that's mm. when Knock Knock Give a Sock's mission became humanizing homelessness one sock at a time by turning transactions, right? The collecting of socks or giving out of socks into interactions, into these meaningful meet your neighbor lunches and dinners. Hmm. That's rather interesting. And uh, we're going to say something else. Oh, I was just going to say, so, so basically after I jumped into knock, knock, give sock full time prior to the pandemic, the three basic pillars of our organization is one, we would distribute half a million socks a year 
Two, we would hire people living in local shelters to help us distribute those socks. And three, we would do these meet your neighbor lunches and dinners where we would bring people living in homes and people living in shelters to have dinners side by side. Hmm, that's rather interesting. And I was thinking about the whole uh, shelter concept. And uh, do they go to shelters where the food is already provided or do you get it from a food bank or do you have like volunteers come in and, and uh, bring food? Every shelter is different in New York City. Some shelters don't provide food and don't let any food in. Some shelters provide food, but won't let you bring it up to the rooms. Some will give you even like a small kitchenette, depending if you get into like an SRO, right? So there's like so many different um, variations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also too, like with the, uh, the situation in, in, in New York city. And, um, of course you have the winters and everything else. And, um, and of course it varies by season by season as well too. And, um, what, what's the, what's the one period do you think, uh, there is a rise in homelessness y'all obviously the holidays, but what's the one period in the nine peak where the homeless rise as well too, as in, in dire need of socks, food, and, um, everything else. And, you know, what I like to always remind people is, right, we have these holiday seasons in which everybody kind of is like, oh, we need to give X, Y, Z, especially as the seasons get cold. And that's when socks are obviously the most important. But some people are like, oh, you know, it's April time, May time. I'll reconnect with you in the winter. And I'm like, no, 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 we need socks now, too. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the fact that um, the summertime is like, feet sweat, you, you step on like, you know, possible glass and everything like that. And, and of course, socks are definitely needed too. So we just have that. And of course, um, we'll also talk about the books, which, um, you know, correlate about the socks and everything. We'll talk about that. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia's got great reviews and Eve Love and endorsed by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, m &Ms. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com on over 30 podcast platforms. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today and coming soon to Hamilton Radio. Also, don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at the MikeWidenerShow.com. And also... For uh, great, more great merchandise, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, and cool merchandise. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific lady who's the founder of Knock Knock Give a Sock, a nonprofit organization in New York City here on the Mike Wagner Show, helping raise awareness about who the homeless are and providing fresh socks and then much needed resource for many homeless shelters. And um, also up to date, uh, how many homeless shelters you guys have in New York City? Man, there's hundreds. We have 60,000 people who are homeless in New York City um, who are currently residing in, in different shelters every night. And then around 5,000 of our neighbors who are on the actual streets and subways. Um, number of shelters, I don't know but there are some shelters that house up to like 250 people and then there are shelters that have like 30 people so uh every shelter kind of varies from there mm -hmm. and, and of course you know also the fact that they need a lot of socks and um of course children over here and they also wrote a couple of books like knock knock give a sock and knock knock where's my sock and um first of all tell us about those books and uh oh it's a good idea to show them too for the little ones yeah where is Perfect. my sock i've got mine hope you got yours <laughs> so um so here, and I'll show you, basically, um, during the pandemic, as I mentioned, pre-pandemic, we were doing all of these dinners all the time, bringing mm -hmm. people living in homes and people living in shelters to have dinners side by side, so that people living in shelters or experiencing homelessness would get to share their stories and journeys around homelessness. So during the pandemic, while we were able to distribute socks, 
we couldn't humanize homelessness because we couldn't do these meet your neighbor lunches and dinners. And so I was racking my brain, how can we humanize homelessness? And then I would read these articles that families living in different parts of New York City were upset that shelters were moving into hotels in their area. Wow. Because they were upset. It was changing their neighborhood. They were scared. There was a lot of stigmas around homelessness. And I was like, we need to reach the, these families to get them to talk about homelessness, think about homelessness, empathize with homelessness, right? Because right now you're like, this is a nuisance on your street for you. But for that guy, he literally doesn't have anywhere to go. So like, you're upset about your like bougie, fancy apartment and like, you know, on billionaire's row and you're not loving the way it looks anymore. But for these people who've been like, uprooted during the pandemic and literally have no place to go and they don't have you know these um pods that we had during the pandemic and it's a really lonely time so that's when I decided I need to do something to humanize homelessness and that's when I thought about writing these children's books it's called the pair of books project hence pair of socks pair of books Mm, I get Uh, it yes clever (laughs) so the pair of books project two books two stories one inspiring message for children in all neighborhoods, right? So these books come together when you purchase them online, you're actually getting two books. Um, and one is called Knock Knock Give a Sock. And it's actually about a little girl named Dee Dee who finds out that her neighbor Diego needs some socks. So she ends up engaging her whole neighborhood and collecting socks for Diego and end up becoming the sock fairy. Sounds oh familiar? my gosh, that's so cute. The sock fairy, I love that. It's basically me as a five-year-old. And then we have (laughs) the next book, which is Knock Knock, Where's My Sock? Mm -hmm. And this is about a little girl who her family moves into a shelter, but during the move, she loses the matching pair to her lucky socks. And now Mm -hmm. she just has one. And she thinks, what can I do if I just have one? Could he even still be lucky anymore? So first she tries on as a bracelet and she realizes it's too big. Then she tries it on as a bag. It's too small. Eventually, she realizes she could put it over her eyes and turn it into a superhero mask. Mm. In the shelter, she starts a superhero club with other kids in the shelter where they all do random acts of kindness throughout New York City. So then in the end, you have two books about two girls in two different housing situations who both are making an impact in their neighborhood, regardless of their housing status. And we actually even worked with families living in shelters while we wrote these books so that whether you're a kid living in a home or a kid living in a shelter, both books would be appropriate for your child. And we don't even use the word homeless in the books. In this book, we talk about our neighbors on the street. And in this book, we talk about a little girl who moves into the shelter because we would never want a kid who's reading one of these books, who knows that they're living in a shelter to self-label themselves as homeless because unfortunately homeless carries such a big stigma around it. And there's so much more than that, right? They're a superhero. Mm-hmm. They're a kid who can make an impact in their neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, another thing, how can we help? How can we help? Well, I would say there are two ways you could help. One, engage your office spaces, your workspaces, your houses of worship, your communities. Um, and you can engage in a sock drive, uh, which you can sign up for at kkgs.org. Super easy. We'll send you our logo to put on a bin. And then at the end of the drive, we'll put you in contact with your local shelter so that everyone can donate locally. Um, and then if you're a family, you know, with some little ones that you want to educate on homelessness, you can, again, go to our website, uh, www.kkgs.org. You just have to remember four letters, kkgs.org. Mm-hmm. And you can, you know, you'll see at the top of the page, socks, about us, mission, blah, blah, blah. And then you'll see books. Click books, and it'll take you to our link to purchase a set of our books. Mm-hmm. And and if people are wishing to donate instead of socks, how can how can they donate? Everything's on the same page. You want to sign up for a sock drive? KKGS.org. You want to donate monetarily? KKGS.org. You want to get books? KKGS.org. We certainly will do so. And you have a special event you're really excited to talk about. We'll get to that in just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, The Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Z of Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with Adina Lickman of Knock Knock Give a Sock, the uh, KKGS uh, Foundation, after this time. We're back with the founder of Knock Knock Give a Sock, a nonprofit organization, KKGS. 
Adina Lichtman here on the Mike Wagner Show and uh, author of two great books, Knock, Knock, Give a Sock and Knock, Knock, Where's My Sock? And um, you also got a big event that's coming up as well, too. And it's really dear to your heart. And let's hear about it. So thank you so much. So as I mentioned um, earlier, we, in addition to having these books and collecting socks, we do these Meet Your Neighbor events where we bring people living in homes and people living in shelters to have events together. So my favorite event of the year that we do is our Meet Your Neighbor Mother's Day brunch where we bring 25 moms living in homes and 25 moms living in shelters to have a Mother's Day brunch side by side, which means we have 80, 90, sometimes 100 kids wow. as well who are in the room next door uh, engaging in activities and carnivals that are, and those volunteers uh, come in many times, they're the dads, the husbands, um, and other volunteers who come join who want to be a part of that. And then we have our um, moms in the other room engaging one of these brunches, and it is the most beautiful way to connect with other mother with other mothers on Mother's Day and mm. step beyond your own home. And that's so amazing as well, too. And uh, what else can we expect from you in twenty twenty two and beyond, Donna? Um, I would say uh, sign up for our newsletter. You can get in contact with us through our website. Follow us on Instagram. Our handle is knock knock give a sock. Uh, and you can see all of our upcoming events. What you can expect from us is every month, we're going to be hosting a different event, uh, bring our neighbors living in homes and neighbors living in shelters to have dinners and brunches and lunches side by side. And we would love to see you there. We certainly will do so. And uh, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Wow. That's great. Honestly, there's, um, there's Sarah Blakely. She's the founder of Spanx. Uh, which is a women's shapewear company. Uh, and while she started a for-profit, uh, so our businesses are very different. Uh, she's someone who I really look up to as someone who has balanced her family life and her work life in really impactful ways and adventure. She's always like up to something fun and exciting. But more than that, uh, I aspire to live up to her hustle. She worked harder than anyone I've ever seen. Uh, she started by selling fax machines door to door and she came up with a product and she just hustled. And now she's, you know, America's first self-made female billionaire. Woo wee, look out Bill Gates. Here she comes. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is amazing. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um, anyone who is in the space of starting something. I remember when I was first starting Knock Knock Give a Sock and I was like nervous and scared. How am I going to start it? How am I going to raise the funds? How am I going to make a career out of this? And I was getting close to graduating school and people kept asking me what I was doing. And I was like, I think I'm going to run Knock Knock Give a Sock full time. And I'll never forget. My dad sat me down and he said, Adina, your toes in the water. Either jump in or walk away, but don't tell people you might do it. You're thinking about you're either doing it or you're not doing it and you have to commit. So my biggest piece of advice is if you're on the fence about something, either jump in the water or walk away. And uh, make sure you keep your socks on too. That's the most important thing. Keep your socks on. <laughs> Always keep the socks on. That's right. And I still got mine on too. And hopefully you still got yours. We didn't lose them uh, during talking. So hopefully you still got them on. <laughs> yeah. Although you did rock my socks off. So. Oh yeah. Or knock the socks off. That's right. And playing for the red socks and the white socks. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the puns. I got you. Exactly. That's right. So we're with uh, Adina Lichtman of uh, founder of Knock Knock Give a Sock here on the Mike Wagner Show. Adina, very big. Thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you in soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. We wish you all the best and uh, make sure you keep us up to date. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people uh, purchase your books or simply uh, check out your services? And uh, how can we help? Yeah, I would say check out our website www.kkgs.org. Like I said, it's just four letters, KKGS, knock, knock, give sock. Um, so go to our website there. You can either sign up for a sock drive or you can purchase a set of books or you can make a donation um, and follow our Instagram for upcoming events to sign up. We certainly will do so. Once again, Dina, very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. We wish you all the best and you've got a great future ahead of you. Thank you. Bye-bye.